Hey all, welcome back again to the series of DBMS and SQL. So people, in the first video, we have covered the basics of DBMS, right? We have seen that there are two major types of dedicated DBMS, that is relational databases and the, all the other types of databases that exist are termed as or combined as non-relational or NoSQL databases, right? So if you haven't checked the first video, first go and check it out because you won't be able to understand the complex things, right? If you don't know the basic things, like if you don't know what is database, how will you understand the different types of databases, right? So first go and check that out. Now, from this video and further all videos, we'll be focusing on relational databases, okay? That is that much important. And one more interesting thing is, I'll be asking questions in between the lecture, okay? So you will have to comment down your answers in the comment section and I'll reply to each one of your comments, okay? So, relational databases. Like, why they are called relational databases? Why they are called relational databases? Because of the way they store the data. They use a data model that is called relational data model to store the data. Now, that's something interesting. First, you have asked what is relational database. Now, you have proposed another term that is relational data model. You're confusing us. Okay, so let me share my screen and then step by step, first we'll discuss what is relational data model and how it is related to relational databases. Okay. So let me share my screen. Okay, so the very first term is relational data model. What is this? It's actually a theoretical data model. Around 1970s, a research paper was published on storing the data as relations. Okay, and relational databases follow this model. Now, why I'm not going into detail of relational data model is because it works on something known as relational algebra, which says store every data as multiple sets. I think you all must be aware of mathematical sets, right? So what are the different operations we can do on sets? The different operations can be, we can do union operation, intersection, uh, we can do Cartesian product on sets, we can find superset, subset, complement, right? So these are different operations we can do on sets. Now, relational databases works on relational algebra, which says whatever data I'm storing is a set. Okay. Now, let's say, uh, for example, in a scalar code base, what might be the different data for scalar? Scalar one data for students, for instructors, for mentors, batches, assignments, all this, right? So relational algebra say, I'll have one set for student, one set for instructor, one set for mentor, one set for batches. And in between these sets, I can perform different set operations. Like I can perform, I can do union operation, intersection operation, superset, subset, and all these things. And one more thing, whatever SQL queries you will see, all internally uses relational algebra. Okay, so internally SQL queries uses relational algebra. For example, if I write a query like this, select star where something and something, which SQL query or which set operation you think it might use? where something and something, you're performing this. It's actually intersection. So can you relate? It's actually, I'm doing intersection here. One more, let's say I write like this, select star from students where name is equal to, let's say, now, which set operation it is? It's actually subset. 
from the set of students, I want only those students whose name is Mantu. So this is subset. Okay. So every data, every data, data you have, you store it in the form of tables. And whatever queries you do on the table, it's actually the set operations. Okay. Now, now let's understand more about relational data model. It's the most important model because it has different properties. Okay. So the very first property is it's the most widely used data model. Before this model, different models were proposed, like tree model, hierarchical model, right? But this relational data model is quite popular because it's very simple. It don't use any complex data structures. It says store data as multiple sets, just simple maths, right? Now, the second property is, it is the data model which is used by SQL, okay? Third point is, it says represent data, represent data as multiple tables. Now, in relational data model term, the table is called relations. So, that means represent data as relations, which means relations is equal to, is equal to tables. Okay, so for example, in scalar code base, you have one relation for students, one relation for instructors, one relation for mentors, one relation for batches for assignments, right? Now, the fourth point is every relation, every relation has multiple real instances, multiple real instances, each represented as rows. What's the meaning of this property? For example, you have the student's table. And in this student's table, you have different rows. Each row is an information about an individual student. So each row is a real entity. Okay. So every relation has multiple real instances each represented as a row. So one row is the information of a complete of an individual student, right? Now, these are some of the properties of relational data models. Now let's move on to some terms of relational database. Some terms that are used. The very first one is attributes. What is attribute? Attributes are columns, or properties of a relation. In simple words, attributes are columns. What columns you have is called attributes or they are called properties of relations. Okay. Second one is tuples. What is tuple? Tuple is rows of the table. Okay. Tuples is rows of the table. Now, third one is degree. Degree is number of columns or attributes in the table. In a relation. So, degree is number of columns or attributes in a relation. For example, if you have a student's table. And in the student's table, you have name, email, phone number and let's say university name. So degree of this relation is 1, 2, 3 and 4 because it has 4 columns. Name, email, phone number and university name. Okay. Now the fourth one is cardinality. Cardinality is number of tuples. Number of elements in the table in the relation or the number of tuples in the relation. Let's say I have two students here, X, Y, Z and A, B, C. So the cardinality of this relation is two because it has two rows, two rows, two students, 
okay now fifth one is null null is known as missing value so if you have a missing value you consider it as null you don't leave a blank space there cross or zero no null is missing value okay so missing value is represented as null okay so these are some of the terms which are commonly used you must uh, know this attributes tuples degree cardinality and null now let's move further let's understand few properties of a relation the very first one is every row should be unique what's the meaning of that every row should be unique which means in one row at least one column should be different from other rows if i uh, write a table if i draw a table like this uh, if i draw a table like a b c d and let's say here e okay okay now and another row a b c d f is this a valid relation yes this is a valid relation why because at least one row one column is different at least one column is different now this is actually very obvious because in set theory in set if you have a set like this a a b d can you have a set like this no it's actually equal to a b right so duplicates are not allowed in sets right because we are following set theory it's actually following set theory so set don't have duplicates right so every row should be unique now now the second point is every row should have same data type for a corresponding column for a corresponding column every row should have same data type for a corresponding column what's the meaning of that let's say in this students table if you have name column then university then let's say graduation year right so every column should have the same data type if you have name as string so strings are only present in this column in graduation year you can only have integers so it's like 2018 2019 it can't be string here you can't write like this 22 no so every row should have same data type for a corresponding column if the column has integer data type should every row should have integers only in that column second point is clear now third one third one is order of columns doesn't matter order of columns doesn't matter let's say if i write a query like this select a uh, branch name or university name from a table right and then i write like this select university name then branch name from students right so both will give me the same answer because order of columns doesn't matter you can go through the columns in any order okay both of them will give me the correct and right answer now the fourth point is similar to that order of rows doesn't matter if i say this is a student table in this student table i just have a one column that is name a b c okay now two person p1 and p2 writes a query like select everything from students 
may be P1 get the result in this order, B, A, C. And P2 writes the same query and P2 might get the result in this order. So, but both the orders, both the result are correct. So, order of rows doesn't matter. Now, because it's similar to relation and uh, it's similar to set. So, set also, set is unordered. Sets are unordered, right? Uh, set, if I write a set A, B, it's actually equal to B, right? Set A, B is actually equal to B, right? So, all these properties are very obvious. It comes from set theory only. Now, the fifth one. Fifth one is every column name should be distinct. Every column name should be distinct. That means in a relation, no two columns can have the same name. Right. You can't have a relation like this. In a student's table, you can't have a uh, like name column, then again a name column. This is not valid. Okay. Every column name should be distinct. Now the sixth point and the very important point is every column, every column value should be atomic. Every value in a column should be atomic. This is very important. Relational data model says a column value should not be non-atomic. What do you mean by atomic? Atomic values means single value. Uh, for example, you can have an integer. One. Uh, you can have a string. Hello. You can have a decimal value. 19.4. Right. So these are all the single value. You can have a Boolean value like true or false. So every value in a column, every column value should be atomic. It should be single valued. You can't have multi-value like you can't have list. You can't have JSON type uh, data. Then you can't have maps. You can't have objects. Okay. So the collection data types are not allowed. Why the reason may be? Because comparisons are difficult in the collection data types. Okay. So these are some of the properties of relation. Okay. It's very obvious. It's actually based on relate. It's actually based on set theory only. Like every, every uh, row, sorry, every column should be unique. Every row should be unique. If the order of the rows doesn't matter. Similarly, order of columns doesn't matter. Same data type for the you have, you should have the same data type for all the rows in the in a column, right? In one column, you should have the same data type for all the rows. Then last important point is every column value should be atomic, should be single valued. Right. Now let's move on to another. Thing, important thing in relational databases that is keys. 